go. That makes my soul happy. Okay, hi. Okay, so we're all in here for how not to draw, correct? Yeah. All right, cute, cute, cute. I see a bunch of people standing against the walls. There are chairs still available. Hey, there's a chair right here. There's a chair right there. Hey, you guys. Sitting. Sitting. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yes, yes. All right. Okay, um, so I'm going to be yelling a lot through this presentation uh, because um, I can't draw and hold a mic at the same time, so I'm going to take advantage of this mic while I still have it. Now, um, how many people in here, we'll go ahead and get started, how many people in here have been in one of my presentations before? All right, cool, we've got a lot of old faces, we've got a lot of new faces, all right, cool, cool, cool. Now, for those of you who don't know, my name is Amelie Belcher, I'm a professional manga artist, and that means I'm bored. Uh, I was the illustrator behind the Yaoi Mango Loud Snow, didn't write it, just illustrated it, makes my life a lot easier. Um, and I do two web comics, The Real Life Adventures of Ami Chan and Vin Diesel Jesus, and the, uh, <laughs> right? Vin Diesel Jesus loves you, that's right. Um, but the other web comic I do is called Bounty Hunter, so that is out as well. Um, man, that's a loud one. So, uh, but before I was a professional manga artist, I was a high school art teacher. I taught high school art. I was a teaching assistant, I should say, for four years at the uh, Diocese Catholic School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. <laughs> Suckers gave me a job. <laughs> so, I used to teach Catholic school. Uh, uh, um, so, all the information I'm going to give you today doesn't come from a place of, look how good I am. I have a book and I drew it. Oh my God, I am so good. And my way is the only way. And I am so great. The information I'm giving you today is coming from a place of somebody who has taught young people and, and everybody really art, and somebody who genuinely does want you to learn art, all right, and how to draw and how to make your own manga and how to put your story out there and be a creative person, all right. So if I say something that kind of rubs you the wrong way, just you know keep in mind I genuinely want you to do the best you can. What is that? Why is there theme music? <laughs> Yeah, that's how I dance. <laughs> so, um, maybe that's the, uh, okay, it's time to get the panel started with it. So, um, that's going to drive me insane if it doesn't stop like you know? <laughs> I can feel about that jump I can't. Um, so anyway, where was I? That needs to stop. Who's in charge of this room? <laughs> Who bought a switch that's making this happen? Because we're just going to turn this into a karaoke panel in about three minutes, guys, I swear. <laughs> Alright. Um, one second while I figure out how to make that stop. Oh, I actually have to turn off. Oh, good. Alright, thank God. Thank you. Alright, so while somebody's checking on that, uh, let me give you a little bit more information. Now, I'm going to be drawing a lot today. I'm going to be giving you a lot of information, alright? And I hope you have a good time watching, but at the same time, I hope you take something away. Now, how many people in here have had our teachers say, do not bring anime or manga into my classroom? I don't want it in here, I don't want you to draw. Alright? Alright, here's the deal. They're right. It's like, uh oh, we used to like this lady, now we don't. Table flip, con over. But here's, here's the reason behind that. As an art teacher, you know, we see people of all different levels of skill come into the room. And, <laughs> and because there are all these different skill levels, you know, we're trying to teach each student individually at their level and moving them on to that next level. Now, your brain has a certain way of processing information. You see it all throughout human history. You'll see the same sort of shapes and symbols throughout all kinds of hieroglyphs and, and uh, pictographs. All, all sorts of things. Like that lemon eye we learned to draw when we were in kindergarten. You know the one. You know the one with the big circle in the middle and it's just a lemon shape. I made an eye. Yay! You can see that again and again and again. You see it on the sides of Mayan buildings. You see it in uh, Japanese art. You see it especially in ancient Egyptian art. Yeah, if you had a few swirly curlies, you got the eye of Ra. What's up, right? So even as a, a species, us as humanity, we learn how to do things at a certain level. When the Renaissance hit and people figured out how to draw in perspective, oh my god! You know, when we figured out one point perspective and how to make it look like lines are disappearing to a vanishing point, that was like the IMAX 3D movie of its day, you guys. I mean, seriously, the painting uh, that Masaccio did in uh, Florence of the Christ on the wall like this and the room disappears behind it, it's a simple one point perspective. People were blown! 
mocking the floors to be like, are you seeing this? Dude, there's, a, there's another room there. And today we're like, okay, fifth grader, do this. Okay. You know, but it's a learning process. And you'll notice like in um, medieval artwork, everything is like, somebody tried real hard to draw this castle and make all the little crinolations and there's guys up there and whatnot. There's a horse, but the horse is almost the size of the castle. And, the castle is trying to be in perspective, but it's all over the map. That's because nobody figured out one from perspective, right? Now, relating back that to you, the student, yay, the music's off, yay. Relating back uh, to you as a student, what this is on the whole is us as teachers are trying to give you information. You may have picked up information along the way, aka gone from a manga, um, but unless you have a full set of tools to pull from, it's going to become muddled. All right. The best uh, way I can describe this is the number one thing you should be worried about is drawing real things in a real environment. Okay, and that's why your teacher doesn't want you bringing anime and manga to the classroom. All right, because what anime and manga is in style is a very simplified 2D representation of an incredibly complex 3D object, which is us. All right. Now, until you fully understand this complicated machine that is the human body, how are you going to simplify that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? All right, cool. So when your teacher says, don't bring that in my class, so just go, go for something. Like that, and take on board what they're trying to teach you, because it is genuine information. Um, an example I like to use is, uh, and we'll see the mistakes that people make. This is going to be all about the mistakes of budding artists, all right? But an example I like to give is when you know kids come to me and they're like, well, I want to be a manga ka, and I want to draw manga, and I want to be rich and famous. I'm like, <laughs> you funny kid. Um, but uh, I'm like, okay, well, I see you can draw girls. Why don't you draw any boys? I'm not getting it, like. Okay, so you want to draw a manga film with nothing but girls. Yes, there is a market for that, but trust me, you don't want any part of it. Um, oh. And at the same time, there are people who are like, well, you know, I, 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 I don't, I, my character's drinking a Coke, but you can't see the Coke because it's off screen. Okay. Why not spend a few hours in room to draw a Coke can? All right? It's like, well, I can draw a Coke can. It's just a cylinder. Well, you say it's just a cylinder. All right? But if you sit a real soda pop can down in front of you and you go, okay, it has got straight sides, it is a, um, a cylinder, but you're looking at it at an angle, so the top is an ellipse, but there's a lip on that ellipse, so the aluminum folding over. It goes concave like this, down the bottom it goes concave as well. There's another lip on the bottom, the bottom goes convex, on the top you've got a little concave top right there, but then there's a lip around the seats. The hole is not in the center, it's a little off center. The tip on the, the, uh, the pop top is a certain shape. All these tiny little details, if you spend just a few hours taking these real world things on board, next time somebody comes to you and says, hey, I need to draw a coke can, I got it. Because you put that information into your toolbox, all right? And the point is, you cannot pull from your file cabinet what you have not put in there, all right? Does that make sense? All right, cool, bait. Enough of the art teacher rant, let's go ahead and point and laugh at other people's mistakes. Ha, 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 ha.
distorted on the screen now because it doesn't like being hooked up to projectors because Vista. Um, <laughs> but that is perfectly okay for the purposes of this demonstration because we're not going to make fine art in this room. No, we're not. <laughs> All right, now you see I'm loading up Mega Studio uh, The View 4. This is the program that I use to make the entire book Loud Snow, which is darn near 200 pages. And it's what I do uh, use to make most of my artwork now. And I do all of my comics within this program. Can't say enough. These people should be paying me for how much I demonstrate this stuff to people at conventions. They're not. But they should be. Um, I love this. A particular program, and we're going to use it to make fun of funny artists and their work. I do not like this page. We're going to make a new page. Do you want to save this page? No. You dead to me, Paige. You dead me. Oh, it's family dead. I want to my dead. Okay. Dang it. And like an idiot, I forgot my mouse. Ugh. And I hate using a touchpad. Stay straight line. Stay straight line. Stay straight line. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's as good as it's going to get, apparently. Okay, so. Yay. All right, now. Look how small it is. That's no good for us. Let's go make that bigger. Shall we? Let's, okay? Now. <laughs> now I'm all sitting down and you can't see me. I hope you're all watching the screen because there will be a test later. There won't be a test later. <laughs> Yay. All right, now. Um, young people, um, well, I shouldn't say young people, but people of skill level at all ages. Like I said, we take in information a certain way, and our brain processes that information a certain way, all right? Uh, and our brain has this really neat trick it does where it, it fools us into thinking that we understand things that we don't, like the human body. We look at them every day, we live in a human body, you know, you think we have this down, but when you say, okay, I need you to draw, like, a forearm, uh, all the information you need is right there in front of you. Well, I need to draw the left arm. Oh, it's a shame. Oh. But, you know, all the information you need is right there. And yet, if you ask the average person to draw the human body, they can't. Now, there are reasons for this. A, the brain tricks us into thinking that we know everything we need to know about the body. And B, uh, the hand-eye skill is not quite there yet. That thing where you're like, I know and hear what it should look like, but the hand isn't doing it. That comes through years and years of uh, training and progress. Uh, when you talk to a professional artist like myself, what you're talking to is a complete lack of the social life during high school. And uh, that's what I did was train myself. Uh, now, remember when we all started like to learn to draw, or uh, learn to draw, learn to type, and we're all like, A, 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 space, space bar, space bar, and we had to look at the keys and find them. And now we're all like, what's up, mm, what's up, three or four seconds, what's up, what's up, what's up, I'm right here. Okay. That's called muscle memory. And the more you draw, the more your muscle memory is going to retain when you're putting forth on paper, all right? So I say draw, 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 draw every day, draw for a few hours every day, every spare second, just so you can build up that hand-eye coordination, all right? And your brain will go, yeah, hey, I want to draw this. Your hand goes, what? I already did it. What's up, brain? What? 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 Nothing. That's what I thought. All right, so let's make fun of people. Now, yay, point my life, yay. Um, we're going to start with girls. Oh, ladies. I'm going to give this character of the young woman whose sketchbook we're looking at right now a name. We're going to call her Sally What's Her Pants. So, Sally What's Her Pants walks up. She's between the age of 12 to 16, let's say, although she could be younger, she could be older, but she's going to make the same mistakes because she hasn't put in the training. Uh, Sally What's Her Pants picked up a, let's say, Sailor Moon manga at the age of nine and went, This is pretty! and has only ever drawn from that manga. She hasn't taken on board anything in terms of real world anatomy. She's never drawn anything from the real world. She's never actually put any thought into the construction of what a physical human body is. But she knows how to draw something that kind of looks like Sailor Moon, right? Yeah. So, uh, that being the case, little Sally What's Your Pants says, This is my sketchbook. I say, Okay, Sally What's Your Pants. And this is what we see. So, first and foremost, we're going to start with the head. Oh, Sally, what's your pants? Ooh, ooh, make it smell. All right, so we can all see, right? Good. Uh, the chin looks like this. Oh. <laughs> well, that's not supposed to happen. Give me two seconds. This is a common flaw between the Wacom tablet and the program and the computer being hooked up to something. What? This <laughs> <laughs> Baby, seriously, don't do this to me, baby. 
Like you've got a set of three here. One guy's head is here, one guy's head is here, and one guy's head is here. It may not look like the most classic triangle, like uh, 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 like perfect isosceles triangle, but if you were to connect from one like center brow to another center brow to another center brow, you've got three points connecting, all right? And your brain is automatically gonna go, that pleases me. Thank you. <laughs> um, an excellent example is, um, I want to say, oh gosh, if I mess this up, I'm going to feel so bad. Vermeer, um, no, it is Vermeer. Vermeer uh, did multiple huge paintings with many, 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 many people in the background. Um, the Night's Watch is an excellent example. Many, many, many figures all crowded together, and yet there are groups of three, constantly groups of three, and then those groups come together to make one large triangle within an image. See, the thing is, while I'm stalling for time, this is actually really cool. Um, we as a society don't know how to read classic paintings the way people 100 years ago did. Imagine living in a world without color photography, and the only time you got to see something bright and beautiful and colorful was either in nature or in a painting. So paintings really were something kind of like mind-blowing and wonderful and magic that happened, all right? Now, a lot of people back then, uh, 200, 300 years ago, they were all, the, their illiteracy was a problem. A lot of people just could not read and write. So there were clues left in paintings, like a certain figure is lounging gracefully, but his fingers just kind, one's just kind of tilted like that. And that is meant to draw that viewer's eye to something <coughs> in the background. What's going on there? No window. Hey, what's that building? And that all meant something. People <laughs> So quite literally, people read paintings and they saw a complete history and a story within these images. And when you set up your groups and figures within these images, be aware of how like a finger pointing may direct towards another character's head. The audience may know they're talking about something off screen, but if there's a finger pointing at his friend, he, they are gonna go, well, what's he doing pointing at his buddy for, you know? So it's just something very subconscious that we pick up on that the old masters knew about. Okay, computer, cereal is cereal, Ermagerd. Where is the plug? <laughs> you guys, there's no plug in this room, though. Yay! All right. Um, so setting up an image, uh, remember your triangles, remember like small groups and then large groups, keep that sort of triangular shape in there. The eye wants to go diagonal, the eye wants to look for other eyes. Um, and we'll get into the eyes in just a second. Oh, well, we get into the eyes. Now, wake up, wake, wake, wake up. What do I say? What do I say? All right, now. Sometimes if you yell at your technology, <laughs> it works better. I threaten it all the time. Uh, while it's booting back up, three weeks later, oh, poor little HP Pavilion. What have I done to you? When I set it down at the computer shop, the guy went, do you travel with this thing? I'm like, sometimes. And he just poked it, and the whole thing rocked. He <laughs> was like, sometimes. I'm like, OK, like all the time. <laughs> Um, now, um, we're set back up, we're set back up. Okay, so little Susie What's Your Pants brings me her sketchbook. And also, ladies, ladies, right now, as one artist who wants to see you as an artist, make good work, make great work, all right? Can we all raise our hands and swear to each other, as a sisterhood, as a humanity, right now, ladies, hands in the air, I hereby swear, I, hereby I, hereby swear. Swear. I will not, I will not. Draw crying fairies on the moon. Draw crying fairies on the moon. Or yaoi boys. Or yaoi boys. Crying at each other's faces. Crying at each other's faces. With one having angel wings. With one having angel wings. And the other having demon wings. And the other having demon wings. And
we're doing this. <laughs> Shit. 
shadow, and that's more important than drawing a belly. A belly, a tiny little, I like that. Maybe three or four loose hairs hanging off the end, and that's all you need. Your audience isn't dumb. They know what they're looking at. But, oh no, we're budding artists, and we're going to draw every one of those eyelashes, because the eye is the window to the soul, and it's so pretty, and oh my god, I love it. <laughs> Now, from there, uh, not to be indelicate, because this is an all-ages show, 
Uh, but from there we go to the, uh, the boobs. Um, <laughs> now, of course, in second grade we all learn how to draw the same sort of thing, you know. But as artists, you turn, you learn to look at the human body no longer as, a, but as simply a series of muscles connected to a skeletal system. And you look at that and you say, okay, that is the machine, and this is what I need need, need to draw to make this happen on a paper. I'm telling you, learning anatomy takes a lot of the fun out of it. So like, I'll be out with my girls and be like, dang, did you see that guy walk by? I'm like, I want to draw his trapezius. Did you see that? <laughs> and they're like, you're weird. I'm like, no, his trapezius was amazing, your face. So, uh, but because we, you know, learn this second grade, you know, we don't want to put any thought or effort into what the body is and how gravity affects it and what it is made of and fat and tissue and bone underneath and we don't understand the planes. We draw them the same way we did when we were like, you know, seven years old. We go, uh, and well, by the way, she is closed, nobody sue me. See, clothes, yay. So, and that's that, right? Now, there is a rib cage living somewhere within here. Within that rib cage are lungs and heart and all beautiful mechanisms that keep us alive. No! Because we know that after this, we've got a tiny waist, because that's important, right? So. Look at the fat chick making fun of skinny girls. Oh, we didn't see that coming. So, um, <laughs> and damn, waist. No actual rib cage. No actual rib cage. No, we just go whoop. Because we know that V is supposed to exist in a Barbie doll shape, and that's what we're after. We don't actually think of things like the rib cage coming and curving back down. We don't think of the oblique muscles on the side. We don't think about the hip girdle and how that box shape fits into the rest of the body. No, because Barbie taught us that that's what a waist looks like, and that's how we're going to draw it. So there's that. Now, um, then, of course, well, okay, I'll leave this one up. Now, Sailor Moon has got that, like, you know, weird skirt thing going on. Well, God forbid we learn to actually draw fabric. Why would we do that when we can do the put the pin on the paper and use one line technique? So we start in the back and we go, So, um, the cap is huge. There's actually nothing 
going on in terms of the time of bustles at all. And if we were to extend these lines up, this isn't actually connecting to any kind of musculature or skeletal system within this. So this poor woman stands up and immediately collapses. <laughs> this is her life, the doom that we have given her. Now, uh, to move back up. <laughs> Sailor Moon has got these stupid little doodles on her arms like that, whatever. Uh, arms, arms, oh god. Okay, so the first arm we're going to see is what I like to think of as the very brave arm. It comes out like that, and then we've got a mitten hand. <laughs> and she's got the little um, wand, and it's got a stall on it. Okay. Right. Now, that's her mitten hand. And you know what? Good for you, little Sarah Wonder Doodle, because, you know, you tried a mitten hand. You tried at least. Because her uh, twin sister, Sierra, what's her face, um, comes up behind, and every arm in her sketchbook looks a little something like this. <laughs> or, because, and a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> or, ha, 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 behind the head. And I'm like, okay, Sarah's sister Sierra, what's her face? Um, you seem to not want to draw a hand. No. Why not? I'm not good at it. But you want to draw a manual for living. Yeah. So let me get this straight. Your plan to learn to draw hands is to <laughs> never draw hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's not gonna fly. You know, spend a week learning hands. Yeah, I know they look intimidating, but trust me, once you understand the machine that is the human hand, this weird claw-like tentacle thing, like blah, 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 designed to take food and put it here all that is what this is. Once you understand how this machine works and the limitations behind it, this ain't nothing. And like I said, all the information you need is right here in front of them. All of it, right here, all right? You are your own best mom. Now, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put her arm behind her back because, hey, whatever. Let's put Sierra drawing there too. Yay! Now, okay, so we've got our unholy abomination. Uh, let us now talk about the hair. Oh, oh, hair. Now, there are many types of hair, especially with the anime and manga, but unless you understand things like drapery and fabric and, and how gravity affects things in the real world, uh, anime and manga hair, um, they don't follow those rules. They just don't, all right? Now, I used to say things like Dragon Ball Z hair didn't exist in the real world until I was at a show and I went to dinner with a Korean rock band and I just stood, stood there and stared <laughs> at their hair that was like this. I'm like, I want to draw you. <laughs> and they're all like, okay, this woman's nuts. I'm like, no, seriously, just let me touch it. <laughs> Let me draw you like one of my French girls. <laughs> so, now the thing is with this you know, particular thing, we've learned to draw this character once, and we sat there and we counted the number of spikes on the bangs. You can't tell me when you drew Naruto that first time, you didn't sit there and be like, one, two, three, four, five, count every spike on his stupid head, all right? We all did his stupid, stupid head. Um, not bad. Um, but yeah, so we remember counting three spikes on one side and four spikes on the other side, and God help you if you think that's ever going to change. So until the end of time, you're going to draw the same character the same way, going, okay, her hair went one, two, three spikes, and then, okay, and then this side, and we go, that way, okay, one, two, three, four spikes, and you don't even really bother spacing out a forehead at all. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Now, your skull is so important, I can't say this enough. Your brain's in there, all right? It's really important stuff in there, you know? And, 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 yeah. But no, she doesn't get a top of the head, no. She gets bangs and nothing beyond her. <laughs> so her head technically ends right here. It's very sad being her, it really is. You know, don't, don't tell her, all right? Just let her, it's okay. Now. Uh, the Dongo thing. I've been told somebody like corrected me three weeks ago, and they're like, they're called Dongos! I was like, okay. <laughs> I was calling them her stupid armored buns. <laughs> because they're stupid armored buns, come on. Yeah, yeah. They're called Dongos! Okay, five-year-old, okay. <laughs> so, uh, little girl set me straight in Florida. Okay, so for Dongos, okay, we got one there, we got one there, and then like that, and then like that, and then... Sparkles! 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 Okay, so she's got her dongos, which quite frankly, it looks 
looks like there's an evil frog trying to eat her head. <laughs> this is all, oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, and from there, we're growing into the hair. Now, we look at manga like, oh, I'm going to blame this entire situation on <coughs> Clamp. Uh, we're growing into things like Chobits and, you know, Clover and Cardcaptor Sakura. The hair that just flows, these beautiful, delicate, thin, gossamer lines, and they, for some reason, come together within our mind's eye, and we see a huge, sort of, long, voluminous, thick shape of hair that's flowing through the wind, but all it truly is are these gentle lines. That's all it is. Yeah, um, they've got assistants who do that, and it's not a computer program. What's up? So, um, yeah, if my, if, uh, yeah, this computer had crashed out just now and erased a serial number on my Mega Studio, then I can show you how to do that. But what's important to know is that that technique is possible with pen and ink, but with lots of practice and a firm understanding of gravity and weight, all right? Now, the best advice I can give on learning how to draw things like hair and fabric is to draw things like hair and fabric. I'm not kidding, all right? Um, we want to put too much detail into things like each individual hair when what's really important is the overall shape. Now, this little girl never actually learned that. She just read a lot of Sailor Moon and show bits. That being the case, she does one of two kinds of hair. We're going to start with the first, which is the I'm going to put my pen on the paper and never pick it up, contour drawing, and it starts like this. I, I, I. Uh, ice with this chin, okay? We don't 
want nothing to do with this chin, bad, bad, bad. So, although trying to punch it, that would be bad too because then you would cut your hand. Okay, it could work out. Okay, never mind, that's cool. So, um, dudes, however, do put in a nose. But it's the same nose that we learned to draw when we were in fifth grade, where you draw, you know, a big black dot on this side and a big black dot on that side, and you connect them like that, and then you draw a nostril, and then you draw a nostril. All right? We all remember that nose from kindergarten, right? 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 We're not in kindergarten anymore. All right? Now the mouth, anger mouth, anger mouth. For some reason, it looks like a ninja turtle mouth. It always looks like a ninja turtle mouth, but the mouth. It's some sort of strange and holy abomination that is in no way, shape, or form actually connected to the world of physics or the face itself. That being the case, it actually lives even outside. <laughs> <laughs> so these teeth are actually being, you know, in the face. It more looks like this is some kind of like nook nook for a baby, and this person's just kind of sucking on it. You know what I mean? That they can't live with these teeth. So. Um, now the eyes, the eyes, anger eyes, anger eyes, all the anger. <laughs> the tiny pupil equals anger. The tiny pupil equals anger. And that's true, tiny pupils do equal anger as part of the flight or, uh, fight or flight response. But yeah, seriously, what? How is any light getting through these pupils? He's blind at the blinded with rage. <laughs> Now, unlike chicks, I shouldn't say chicks, unlike bronze, um, <laughs> unlike young ladies, uh, uh, guys don't tend to forget the ears. But because we've been reading DBZ and other magazines of that ilk, they all look like cinnamon buns. <laughs> all right, we're going to draw that in real quick, like that. So we got these massive ears hanging off. We've got a nose we're going to draw in second grade. We've got a mouth that doesn't actually live on the face. And we've got people so tiny and students blind, all right? Uh, now, from there, we're going to move on to the hair very quickly. So, DBC hair. I hate it so much with an ungodly passion. You have no idea. So let's draw that. It looks a little something like this. I draw a widow's peak, not in the center of his head. And then we're going to go, uh, 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 spikies. Uh, 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 spikies. Okay, and then the hair goes, Just make 
make sure you table towards the wrist. After the legs, make sure you draw the full length of legs over the tiny little <laughs> <laughs> 